Author John Kuiper Liberty presents Gospel Theology, God's Good News for Everything, published by Westbow Press, Bloomington, Indiana, 2021, used with permission. Appendix O, Cultures of Grace in the Family and the Church. We all know what it is like to walk on eggshells around certain people, especially around those in authority. If I say this or that, we think, is the person going to bite my head off? If I make a wrong look, will he stop talking to me? If I ask a question or speak in the wrong tone of voice, will she punish me in one way or another? Sometimes people feel like they are walking on eggshells because they have an individual identity problem. They are deriving their identity from what others think of them and have given in to the sinful fear of man. Proverbs 29, 25. But oftentimes, those influencing the culture of an organization have created a culture of fear. These cultures can be created when members of an organization, and especially the leaders, fail to apply the truths of the gospel grace of God to their hearts and actions. God is the most awesome, powerful, and majestic being in the universe. You do not mess with him. He will not be mocked for long, Galatians 6, 7. We have all heard the phrase, the fear of God. Fearing God is very biblical, but sometimes we misapply the meaning of this phrase. Those who are not yet Christians should be terrified by God. The Bible says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews 10.31 But for Christians, the fear of God does not mean that we are afraid of Him like how we would naturally be afraid of an axe murderer loose in our house or an abusive dad who is easily set off. It means we have reverence, awe, and deep respect for Him that leads us to heartfelt obedience. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. When we understand and apply the love of God in Christ, we are not afraid of God in the sense that we have to tiptoe around, just hoping that we do not do the slightest wrong thing that will set him off to punish us. God certainly disciplines his children, but he does it as a loving and kind father, Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. The one who has the greatest authority and power, God, is not someone we as Christians have to be afraid of anymore. This is exactly what Romans 8, 15 means. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Jesus is the one who had all authority and power, but shockingly, he used his authority and power to serve us who were fighting against him. When we taste this grace that we have received from God, our hearts are changed and different actions then follow. We will not look to make sure everyone pays for their supposed sins against us, since we are not going to pay for our sins against God. Rebukes done rightly are a very good thing, but a gentle heart check question or kind word of correction is much different than nitpicking and coming down harshly on someone. When we taste grace, we will encourage people to be honest with us, even if it could hurt our feelings, since we are already loved by our Father and have an eternal inheritance coming. We will encourage people to share their true thoughts with us, even if they disagree, and we will respond in gentleness since the Holy Spirit ultimately changes people, and our identities are not based on everyone agreeing with us. We will be quick to overlook rude comments or dirty looks, knowing this disrespect is nothing compared to how we have treated the Father, yet He delights in us in Christ. We will be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven us. Ephesians 4.32 We will welcome input, correction, and rebuke, even if we are in a position of authority, knowing that we are first and foremost in authority to be the chief repenters. We demonstrate to those following us that God is the one who has all knowledge, and that Jesus is the hope, not us. Cultures of fear are created when a husband exasperates his wife and children, or when managers in the workplace are harsh with their employees, or when Christian pastors are domineering, forgetting that they are not ultimate but are under-shepherds, who are not called to control the lives and situations of those whom they are called to care for, treating them like objects they own, rather than Holy Spirit-filled adults who also have access to God and His Word. In 1 Peter 4.8, God says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Christ took care of the sins of Christians on the cross. 
Now we do not have to walk on eggshells in our relationship with God. He is a loving Father who disciplines us when we need it. But He is not constantly looking over our shoulder, waiting to catch us in wrongdoing so He can maintain control. He is not like that. He watches over us in delight, love, and grace. The Lord takes pleasure in His people. Psalm 149, 4. When we understand this, we are transformed to create cultures of grace instead of cultures of fear.